Mute girl and amphibian man embracing in the bathroom. She turned the faucet to the maximum water and blocked the bathroom door with a towel. Then she gestures to the water monster in sign language. You are with me. Then she removed her clothes and slowly reached out to the water monster with her hand. Time passed by. The love between the two parties was as strong as the water that filled the room. The mute woman takes a deep breath and dives into the water and embraces the water monster. They enjoy their time alone and don't care about the water spilling out of the floor and windows. Downstairs in the cinema, the sleeping audience is suddenly awakened by the water droplets. Giles, the neighbor who had received the complaint, entered the mute girl's room. The door to her bathroom was no longer able to stop the water from flowing freely. Giles hurriedly pulled the door open. Then a bathroom full of water poured out. Giles looked into the bathroom with curiosity. The mute girl was happily holding the water monster in her arms. And the water monster is emitting a blue light. Giles knew he had come at the wrong time and closed the door silently. Afterwards, he still expressed his shock to Eliza. Although he knew that Eliza could not speak since she was a child, Eliza was withdrawn and had no friends. Deep inside, she had always longed for care and love. But he never thought that the mute girl and the water monster would have feelings. And this forbidden love has to start from a few months ago. Aliza was found by the river when she was young. She had three striking scars on her neck. Aliza was born without the ability to speak. This made her circle of life extremely small. Her isolation from the outside world made her feel lonely. Aliza has only two friends. One is Giles, an old painter from the neighborhood who is living in poverty. The other is her black colleague at work, Zelda. Aliza works as a housekeeper at a secret American research site. She has been doing this job for 10 years. Aliza's life is simple and regular. She wakes up every day and cooks dinner on time. She went to work and clocked in on time. She never changes the way she cooks her eggs in plain water. Although her life was boring, but Aliza still approaches each day with enthusiasm. Her wish is to own a pair of red high heels, but it was too far from her image. She hesitated to buy them. That day she was cleaning as usual. The research team brought in a large water tank. Aliza went up to look inside the tank when no one was looking. The creature in the tank sensed something and became irritable. The doctor was afraid that Aliza would make a mess, so he rushed everyone else out of the lab. Ever since the creature was brought into the lab, the cleaners were not allowed to enter the lab. They could only clean the toilets every day until an accident happened. Eliza and Zelda were eating a meal. The supervisor came running nervously and urged them both to bring their cleaning tools and follow him into the lab. At that moment, the lab floor was covered with blood stains. Everyone realized that something was wrong, but they didn't dare to ask questions. They just focused on cleaning up. All the signs pointed to a scary creature in the tank. Aliza wasn't scared at all. She was more curious about the tank. She heard a low roar from the tank and unconsciously walked forward. Aliza finally saw the true face of the creature in the tank. It was a human-like amphibian man. His skin was dark blue. He also had fins. But Aliza didn't have time to look at him closely. The supervisor came in to check on her cleanup. From that day on, Aliza couldn't stop thinking about going back to see the monster. The woman couldn't help but be curious to see the monster up close in the tank. She peeled the eggs and waited. The scent of the eggs successfully drew the monster out. She finally got a good look at the monster. Half human, half fish. She tried to pass the egg to the monster. However, the monster's reaction was very violent. The woman hurriedly put down the egg and wanted to show him that she did not mean any harm. The monster seemed to be afraid of people. He grabbed the egg quickly and then dived underwater. Since Eliza had a close encounter with the monster, she was less afraid of monsters. She always takes the time to clean the lab when no one is around. She took out the eggs she had prepared and gave them to the monster to eat. Gradually they got to know each other better and better. It turned out that although they couldn't communicate, but they could bond through music. As their relationship grew closer, Eliza would also dance with the mob. The monster watched her silently from the sidelines. While they were living in harmony, all their actions were witnessed by the doctor. The doctor was shocked because his research had not been progressing. He thought that the monster was cruel and inhuman. He didn't expect the monster to show its gentle side in front of Eliza. That day Eliza sneaked into the lab with the X as usual. But this time, she found the monster chained to the test bench. The wound on his body was still ouncing blood. It turns out that the monster's abuser is Fleming. The security chief was bitten off by the monster's finger not long ago. Fleming takes a baton and stabs the monster in the chest to get back at him. Eliza heard the monster's screams and felt scared. Until the door opened again, the monster had fallen in a pool of blood. The men didn't care about the monster's wounds. They just wanted to find out what this monster could be used for. 
Aliza had only one thing on her mind now. She had to get the monster out. As soon as she gets home, she talks to Giles about saving the monster. Giles thinks her idea is crazy. There was no way it would work. But Aliza kept gesturing and sign language and told Giles about the days she spent with the monster. Giles felt the deep emotion between Aliza and the monster through her movements and expressions. Finally, he was convinced. He decided to work with Aliza to complete this difficult task. Also wanting to save the monster is the laboratory doctor. It turns out that the real identity of the doctor is a Soviet spy. He hopes that the Soviets will help save the monster, but his boss Mihalkov wouldn't take the risk and didn't want the U.S. to continue the research. So Mihalkov gave the doctor a dose of poison and told him to find a way to poison the monster. This way, the monster would be contaminated with the drug and lose its research value. The doctor was very disappointed with Mihalkov's decision. Just as he was preparing the poison and walking into the lab, he sensed something strange in the surveillance footage. He realizes that another organization is trying to save the monster, and that group is Aliza and her friends. Aliza had already made all the preparations for the rescue with Zelda and Giles. They plan to work together to accomplish this daunting task. According to their plan, Aliza would first hide the monster in the cleaning tool truck and then quietly move him to the parking lot. Giles could then drive the monster away, but their rescue operation had barely begun. The doctor came to the lab. We can see the panic on Aliza's face. She thinks their plan has been discovered, but in fact, the doctor is here to help them. The two of them work together to stuff the monster into the cleaning truck. The doctor also gives Aliza a box of mineral salts because the monster must live in the salt water to survive. Not only that, the doctor also used the bomb his boss gave him to blow up the base's power system. Sick used poison to kill the security guard in the parking lot. The group worked together to transfer the monster to the car. Giles quickly drove away from the experimental base. The head of security realized the monster had disappeared when it was too late. The woman takes off her clothes at the door and walks towards the monster in the bathtub. She goes inside the tub and draws the curtain. But this is only Elisa's fantasy. Since Elisa had rescued the monster, she knew that the monster could only live in the salt water of the tub. He would never feel comfortable and free. The monster would become weaker and weaker. The only way he could survive was to return to the sea. According to the weather forecast, the 10th of this month is a stormy day. With enough water, the monster will be able to swim down the city sewers and return to the deep sea. There is still some time before they are ready to release the monster. Aliza and Zelda continue to go to work so that they won't be suspected by the lab. Although the head of the security team had trouble with them, but they still managed to deceive the others with their excellent acting skills. Aliza came home from work that day and found Giles injured. When she asked, she found out that the monster had snuck into the living room and eaten a cat. The monster seemed to realize that he had done something wrong, so he left the cat and ran out of the house. He also accidentally cut Giles' arm. Aliza immediately ran out to find out where the monster was. The monster had gone far. He just watched a movie in the cinema downstairs. Aliza rushed to bring him home. The monster looked at the injured Giles and apologized to him. He first touched Giles' head. Then he covered the wound on Giles' arm with his palm. Then he went back to the bathtub. Aliza didn't blame him either. Aliza gently touched him to comfort him. The moment their skin touched, a wonderful feeling came over them. The monster reached for Aliza's hand. Aliza subconsciously fled the bathroom in fear. But this fascinating emotion was always on her mind. Eventually, she broke through all the external restraints and re-entered the bathroom. Everything that happened between them happened naturally. They thought they could wait until the tending piece. But the head of security had already found out that the doctor was the suspect who let the monster go. Although the doctor denied it, but he was still being watched. Mihalkov, the doctor's Soviet superior, also realized that the doctor had betrayed the organization and let the monster go and ruin everything. Mihalkov planned to get rid of the doctor. By the night of the 10th, it was really raining hard. Mihalkov also started his operation. Mihalkov took the doctor to the countryside. He was about to kill the doctor. Fleming, the head of security who had been watching the doctor, came along. Fleming shot and killed Mihalkov. Then he beat up the dying doctor and forced the doctor to tell the whereabouts of the monster. In the end, the doctor only said that the monster had no name and no number. They just claim. Fleming pondered over the meaning of this statement. He suddenly had an epiphany. Fleming immediately switched his investigation to Elisa and Zelda. Zelda was very loyal. She pretended not to know anything in the face of the threat. But her husband was a coward. He was threatened and told everything. He even told them about his plans to release the monster at night. 
Fleming learned that the monster was at Aliza's place and immediately drove to the pier. At that moment, Aliza and Giles were helping the monster to the pier. The monster touched Giles' head with his hand for the last time in the heavy rain. He also said goodbye to Aliza with the sign language she taught him. Just as they were parting, Fleming arrived at the pier. He shot Aliza and the monster. Aliza's life was in danger, and the monster is back on his feet. His body glowed with an eerie blue light. His gunshot wound had already healed itself through powerful superpowers. The monster did not hesitate to give Fleming a fatal blow. Then he picked up the dying Aliza and jumped into the sea. He kissed Aliza deeply in the sea. A short time later, the three scars on Aliza's neck suddenly opened up. Bubbles came out of her mouth. Aliza evolved fish gills. She was now able to breathe freely in the water. They hugged each other tightly. They slowly sank into the deep sea. Everything has a trace. Everything seems to be destined. It's a fairy tale of undisguised love. It is a shining child's heart and a tribute to the innocence of life. It seems boldly of love and goodness. Every adult knows that everything in the movie can't be true. But everyone wants to believe that it really happened. Because it stands firmly on the opposite side of reality. It seems confidently of a miracle. Everyone who is alone in this world. Who wouldn't want to witness a shining moment. Aliza is a handicapped person. Her other organs are more sensitive to perception. Aliza was born unfortunate but with a unique language. She is able to communicate telepathically with her lover. She sinks into the water with the monster in her arms and feels love, life and freedom.